Wait they're, a they're second. Predictor so, of rights so hang on, wait a yeah. second. Go for so it. So men can take your rights away in those other countries too? No, not just men. Those countries can take your rights away. You need and a whole using the enforcement arm of who? Which sex do you think is the enforcement Their arm? Countries are powered by men and women. But Andrew Wilson from The Crucible absolutely dismantles destiny in this heated debate. In this clip, the two clash over the patriarchy and men's roles in society. Destiny, often referred to as the wiki warrior, tries hard to make his points, but Andrew Wilson repeatedly shuts him down. As the debate goes on, Destiny loses his cool, resulting in a pretty entertaining moment. Let's dive into the clip and see how it all unfolds. How are they failing? Yeah, but you just said you were safe, Angela, so I don't know that they're failing, right? I don't know that that's... It's just right now, we like, the way that society works, we have a whole, like... It's men don't do anything. It's the massive institutions that we've created around our countries that ensure rights. You don't get rights from men. You get rights from the protections that the institutions of government have guaranteed you, right? There are men in all sorts of different countries, but the rights that women have afforded to them dramatically vary from country to country, regardless of what man is going to protect them. You know, you might have the strongest male defender ever in Afghanistan, but it doesn't mean you're going to college if you're a woman there. Um, I, and also just when you compare country to country and you're looking for like, what are the most successful countries? It's not the ones with the most alpha men or the most manly men protecting the rights. It's generally you're looking for things like, do women have access to birth control and are they participating in the economy? So I don't know. It's just like, it's a very crude argument. Well, there's a bunch of things like that are kind of smuggled in there, right? So the okay. first thing is kind of smuggled in is you talk about institutions being the protectors of rights. Institutions are just a coalition of people, individuals. They're going to rely on the enforcement arm also of men. You say it's not masculine men who are defending these rights. However, it is masculine men who are in the military, in law enforcement, things like this, who are the enforcement arm of these rights, who these government institutions rely heavily on in order to enforce what their will is. So it so always does, mean, does come down to on enforcement. That. Do you think then that the countries where women have the most rights are the countries with the most masculine strong men? So they're not mutually exclusive or non-exclusive. I didn't say they're mutually exclusive. I'm asking because you're, it may, you make it sound like it's just strong men that grant rights. So does that mean well, that if not, I were to look I, at I, all I, the women's rights in the world, are the there's a problem women's... there? There's a smuggling okay. again where I, where you say you say strong masculine men are the only ones doing them. I'm just saying men is the default to the ones who are doing this. Wait, so, wait, but why? You... If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. You say men are, men are the default. Like, we can run that back a little bit more reductively. Shouldn't it be okay. six feet or taller men? Like, don't all men that are 5'8 and lower get their rights from men that are six feet and taller? No. Why not? Because they don't have a uh, non-equalization on force. A 5'8 person can oh. defend themselves against a 6'0 person. <laughs> if you, in men. general, do you think that's true? I think that there are some advantages, but if you're going to do that, then on average, well, no, 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 not we some have advantages. I'm saying on average, if we look if at you're combat do that, sports if you're with do no that, weight classes, you think five eight men are defending? Well, hang on. So if we're going to use, if we're going to use averages, and let's use averages and say that we have an average for a reason, because most men are inside of that average, right? So if that's true, then most of the men who would be falling in these jobs are going to be within that average, Destiny. So sure, but I'm just I'm just asking <laughs> if we run this all the way back. So any man that's below the average height, any man that's five nine or lower their rights are also being defended by men that are 6'2 and taller. Well, no, that wouldn't be a direct coalit for equalization because men who are Why six not? foot, because men who are six foot, there's far fewer of them than men who are in the average aggregate. So therefore the force equalization is different. However, if you're looking at the force differential from men to women, the average is so lopsided that even weak men can generally defend themselves fairly well against strong women. If you want to do force equalization there, then shouldn't we be looking at people that prefer a heavily patriarchal society versus people that prefer a more egalitarian one? And the force equalization for women on the egalitarian one would be probably that most men would side with that over the ones that want the heavily patriarchal one? Yeah, but that would go with my point, that, which is that men are the ones who are the rights givers. But men aren't just the rights givers they there are. because a coalition of five, nine and shorter men uh, with women are probably going to defend rights more than a coalition of six foot yeah, plus alpha but men. But the distinction there is that you, you and you said it yourself, it would be a coalition of men and women, but it'll never be women. So it'll always and have it'll to never be, be men. five, eight and lower men, I don't think. No, right? it will always be. Yeah, the default will always go to men. Men can always enforce their rights collectively. Okay, so you just want to arbitrarily cannot. cut it off at just men, but not go into any of the delineations. I just went into every delineation that... with you. Which one would you like to go into? <clears throat> I, I mean, I already said it. I think that you could argue that like stronger, or I'm sorry, taller men are the ones that run society, and, and shorter men only exist in society essentially at the behest of larger men. Basically. Yeah, but we just covered this. That's true. You could say that, but if you're looking at an average then you're saying that the men who are outside of the average are fewer in number than the men who are in the average. So they're outnumbered. So I don't know what your point is. 
I mean, it could be the slightly taller men could probably take on 1.5 shorter men. I'm sure we could find some average where 30% of men in society can run the other 70%. And it's still it's just men. Like nobody looks at, and it's yeah, still men. It, <laughs> Destiny tries hard to make his point, but Andrew Wilson doesn't let up. Wilson's argument is that men have historically been the ones responsible for enforcing rules, from the police to the military. Destiny, on the other hand, makes the point that taller and stronger individuals are the ones in charge. But that doesn't necessarily hold up in all cases. If you look at the military, especially special forces, it's not about being a giant. Many of the most capable soldiers aren't towering over others. They're built for stamina and endurance, which are more important on long missions. Being bigger might help in quick, physical situations like a fight, but when it comes to chasing down criminals or lasting through long tasks, it's often the smaller, more agile person who excels. Andrew Wilson's points seem logical and clear, while Destiny's argument feels a bit scattered. Watching Destiny debate is always interesting, especially when you see the difference in how he and Wilson approach their arguments. Wilson goes step by step, while Destiny tends to jump around. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Again, and to go very broad, because now, I mean, I feel like we kind of see how ridiculous the argument is and just like saying, just men, just men, just men. I haven't like, heard you broadly refute speaking, it. Broadly speaking, right, it's hard to refute because it's almost unfalsifiable because you're talking about half the population of the planet, right? Like, how am I supposed to refute that men you are important well, in guarding rights? There are no countries. There are no countries. There are no countries that exist without men. But when I try to think of like, well, what's the refutation of this? Here would be an interesting thing. Do the countries with the strongest men have the most rights? Not really. No. In fact, just the opposite. I remember hearing so many jokes about how because Russia is so masculine and manly that all the trans Ukrainian soldiers were going to be getting murdered by the brave Russian soldiers. And here we've got drone operators, you know, tossing grenades on Russian troops, blowing themselves. Right. So it doesn't seem to be the case that like just so strong men are a good predictor so, of rights. So hang on. Wait a second. Go for so it. So men can take your rights away in those other countries, too? No, not just men. Those countries can take your rights away. You need a whole Using the enforcement arm of who? Which sex do you think is the enforcement Their arm? Countries are powered by men and women. When the Soviet Who's Union beat the enforcement Nazi arm? Germany, when, so, when the Soviet, it's not just about the enforcement arm. Who's giving them the arms to enforce? Usually other men. Who manufactures the guns? Who the manufactures. Men. Do you okay, think that so there's when, female gun makers all over the world or what? Yeah, bro? who do you think was working production in World War II when all of our men were going overseas? They weren't designing the guns. They were literally they, on an assembly line putting... At the end of the day, both jobs matter. You could be the best engineer in the world. You don't have somebody building your shit. It doesn't... Men allow them to. That's fantastic. Sure. And what I'm saying, <laughs> you can say if men allow them to, however you want to say it or whatever, but the reality is at the end of the day, it's not just men, right? You need both halves of society working together to actually fucking accomplish anything. So there is no society or country that's like... You're smuggling okay, in smuggling, just yeah. men again. You're smuggling okay. in just men. What I'm saying to you specifically is that men are the enforcement arm, and nobody's building shit if men say no. That's what I'm saying. Women aren't going to be able to go to men and say, no, you know what? We're going to do it anyway if men don't want them to, Destiny. That's the distinction. Well, I disagree with what you're saying because I understand what you're saying. It sounds like it sounds great on paper, but if we, again, look at the stats right now, the suicide rates are up. Men are dying. Men aren't going to school. They've dropped out of school during COVID. Yeah, but, but um, hold on, Angela. The, the point of the patriarchy two, wasn't ahead. to just do the point of the pay. What do you say in the patriarchy? It wasn't that all men do better. I because well, I've heard this argument before. Uh, yes, huh. men are going to commit suicide more because there's men at the bottom of the of society that are not benefiting from this patriarchy. Right? Does that make sense? So I, like, I, I I've heard the argument before, but like the idea that men are suffering isn't really the reason why the patriarchy isn't working. It's like the the, the point he's trying to make is. Andrew's, uh, uh, guys, tell me if I'm wrong here. Andrew's trying to say that the foundation of society, there are men who have to enforce and take certain jobs that have to do with military law enforcement, et cetera. And what Destiny is saying is that while that is a, a part of society and probably a more important part of society in the past, today it's a less important society because we have technology, because we have, you know, someone who's a computer programmer, doesn't matter if they're a man or a woman, people can be successful entrepreneurs and be men or women. And I totally understand both, both parts of those. But my issue the initial thing that i was saying before was that because men are generally are more aggressive they're going to fill more parts of those society more parts of that society um being entrepreneurs being ceos of companies being in the u.s military being bodyguards and except stuff like that so this is the issue with some leftist perspectives like destiny and others on this panel they seem to think that the foundational systems that have kept society running everything from infrastructure to energy, 
can just be removed or replaced because of advancements like technology. Andrew Wilson makes the point that you can't take out the foundations that men have historically built and maintained, such as keeping essential services like power and gas flowing, without expecting the whole system to collapse. While it's true that many new jobs and services have emerged, those only became possible because the basics were already covered. Wilson's argument is that the foundation of society has always been upheld by men, and you can't simply remove that without consequences. No society in history has been built solely by women. Destiny's arguments, as Wilson points out, seem to rest on untested theories, and we're already seeing the issues those theories can cause in today's world. When things collapse, Wilson argues, it's going to be men who step in to rebuild, just like they have in every society throughout history. What do you think about Andrew Wilson's points in this debate with Destiny? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.